Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Dr. Mashmi Das and today here I am to continue my series on anatomy of larynx. Now in my last video, I have spoken about the basics which is the extent of larynx, the parts of larynx, the blood supply, lymphatic drainage and the mucosal lining of larynx. Today in this class, I'm going to be talking about the laryngeal cartilages, the ligaments and membranes of larynx and the laryngeal joints. Now let's start our class. So, in today's class, the first topic we'll be talking about are the laryngeal cartilages. Now, laryngeal cartilages can be divided into two types, the three unpaired and the three paired cartilages. Three unpaired cartilages are the epiglottis, the thyroid cartilage and the cricoid cartilage, whereas the three paired cartilages are the arytenoid cartilages, the corniculate cartilages and the cuneiform cartilages. So, first we'll be talking about epiglottis now epiglottis it is a thin thin leaf like sheet of yellow elastic fibrocartilage which forms the anterior wall of the laryngeal inlet it projects upwards behind the tongue and the body of the hyoid bone when we talk about its attachments we will be seeing firstly it is attached inferiorly to the thyroid cartilage just below the thyroid notch in the midline by the thyroepiglottic ligament Secondly, it is attached anteriorly to the hyoid bone by the hyoepiglottic ligament, which in turn is dividing the epiglottis into a suprahyoid part and an infrahyoid part. And from the sides of epiglottis, you will see AE folds, which is the array epiglottic folds. It sweeps downwards and backwards to the apex of the arytenoids. And lastly, the mucous membrane of epiglottis is reflected onto the base of tongue, forming the median and the lateral glossoepiglottic folds. You'll see here in the picture that the first thing is the thyroepiglottic ligament. You'll see how it is attached here at the midline of the thyroid cartilage just below the thyroid notch. Secondly, the hyoepiglottic ligament, which is dividing the epiglottis into a suprahyoid part and an infrahyoid part. Thirdly, you will uh, you are not able to appreciate here the AE folds, which usually sweeps downwards and backwards from the sides of the epiglottis. And the fourth thing, the epiglottis mucosal membrane reflects onto the base of the tongue, as you can see over here, and it forms the median and the lateral glossoepiglottic folds. Next, we head on to the different surfaces. The epiglottis has two surfaces, the anterior surface, which is also known as the lingual surface, and the posterior surface, which is also known as the laryngeal surface. Now, the anterior surface, it is separated from the thyrohyoid membrane and the upper part of the thyroid cartilage by a potential space which is filled with fat and this space is known as the pre-epiglottic space. It is a very important space and this is something I'll be talking much more in details in a later episode where I speak about the different spaces in larynx. Now surgically, this space is very important because it is invaded in carcinoma of the supraglottic larynx or also in the carcinomas of the base of tongue. Now this anterior surface is covered with mucous membrane superiorly and it forms the posterior wall of vallecula. As you can see here, this is the anterior surface or the lingual surface, the, the uh, surface which is facing towards the tongue. Now secondly, the posterior or the laryngeal surface. It is a concave or convex structure. It uh, is concave above and convex below forming a bulge which is called as the tubercle of epiglottis. Now this tubercle of epiglottis actually is important because it obstructs the view of the anterior commissure when we try to examine the larynx with the help of indirect laryngoscopic examination. This surface as you can see in the picture here is also indented with a lot of pits. Now these pits usually lodge the mucosal glands and they may also show these perforations that you can see they help in direct communication between the laryngeal surface of the epiglottis and the pre-epiglottic space. Why is this important? This is important because the supraglottic cancers are spreading through these uh, perforations in the epiglottis into the pre-epiglottic space as I just discussed above. So, this is all that you have to know about epiglottis. Next, we head on to the thyroid cartilage. 
Now, thyroid cartilage, it is the largest of all the cartilages. Now, talking about the parts of thyroid cartilage, it is composed of two lamina and two cornu. The first thing is the two lamina. Now, these two lamina, they are fused in the midline anteriorly, giving rise to a laryngeal prominence. In this laryngeal prominence, it is angled at 90 degree in men, as we commonly in layman terms, we call the Adam's apple in men. It is because of this angulation that we are able to see it externally. And in women, this angle is not so acute. It is 120 degrees. So therefore, you cannot see it externally on the surface. Now, each of these lamina, it is prolonged above and below and helps in forming the superior and the inferior cornu. Now, the superior cornu is long and narrow. It curves upwards and backwards and ending in a conical extremity to which a lateral thyroid ligament is attached. And the inferior cornu is much shorter, thicker in comparison to the superior cornu and it curves downwards and medially. And on the medial surface of its lower end is a small oval facet for articulation with the cricoid cartilage. So we will see here in the picture, these are the two lamina of the thyroid cartilage as you can see and they meet anteriorly to form the thyroid notch or the angle now this angle as you can see is acute in men and thus forming the adam's apple now as you can see here these two are the superior cornu of the thyroid cartilage which gives attachment to the lateral thyroid ligament and secondly these are the inferior cornu and as you can see it has a facet for cricoid cartilage this is forming the joint which is known as the cricothyroid joint next are the attachments of thyroid cartilage on the external surface of each lamina you will see there is an oblique line which curves downwards and forwards from the superior thyroid tubercle to the inferior thyroid tubercle now this line gives attachment to three muscles which are the thyrohyoid sternothyroid and the inferior constrictor muscle this is what is uh, attached on the external surface of the lamina on the inner aspect of the cartilage just below the thyroid notch in midline it gives attachment to the thyroepiglottic ligament as i was showing to you while i was talking about epiglottis and below this thyroepiglottic ligament attachment on each side of the midline we see the attachment of four structures the vestibular and the vocal ligaments, the thyroarytenoid, ligam the thyroarytenoid muscle, the thyroepiglottic muscle and vocalis. Now this vocalis muscle you will see uh, here there will be a fusion of the anterior ends of the two vocal ligaments which helps in forming the anterior commissure tendon. Now you will see in the picture over here. This is the attachment of the epiglottis via the thyroepiglottic ligament. Here are the vocal ligament, the vestibular ligament, the thyroepiglotticus and the thyroarytenoid muscle. These are all the attachments on the inner surface of the thyroid cartilage. Whereas if you see on the outer surface on this second image over here, you see that this line over oblique line over here gives attachment to the thyrohyoid muscle, the sternothyroid muscle and the inferior constrictor muscle. Next we go on to the superior border of each of the lamina. It gives attachment to the thyrohyoid ligament. And the inferior, uh, the inner aspect of the inferior border of the lamina gives attachment to the cricothyroid ligament. The importance of this is that you will see most of the laryngeal foreign bodies they get arrested above the level of vocal cords that is which is basically the level of the middle of the thyroid cartilage. Therefore, in such cases, when you have to manage the airway and you have to secure the airway, this effective securing of the airway can be done by cricothyroidotomy. So cricothyroidotomy is how you, is the first immediate emergency measure that you take in such cases when laryngeal foreign bodies are arrested and the patient is going into an airway arrest. Next, we head over to the cricoid cartilage. 
Now, cricoid cartilage is the only complete cartilaginous ring which is found in the airway. As you saw, the thyroid cartilage and the epiglottic cartilage, they do not form a continuous ring. Now, this cricoid forms the anterior and the lateral wall and most of the posterior wall of larynx. When we talk about the different parts, we will see that it has a deep broad lamina which is located posteriorly and an anterior arch which is located anteriorly. So the lamina is broad and the uh, arch is very narrow. Now these uh, the cricoid cartilage helps in forming two joints. The two joints that it forms are actually the cricothyroid joints and the cricoarytenoid joints. As you can see here, here is formation of the cricothyroid joints and the cricoarytenoid joints, the facets will be present over here and it helps in forming the cricoarytenoid joints. Now when we talk about the cricoarytenoid joint, it is uh, as I was showing you, it, the lamina of the cricoid cartilage, it has sloping shoulders on which the articular facets are present where the arytenoid cartilages are articulating with. So this is the facet for the articulation with arytenoid cartilage whereas this is the facet for articulation with thyroid cartilage. Next we head on to the attachments of cricoid cartilage. The different ligaments which are attaching to the cricoid cartilage are the cricotracheal ligament as you can see from the name it connects the cricoid cartilage to the first tracheal ring. The cricothyroid ligament connecting the um, cricoid cartilage to the thyroid cartilage there is a membrane which connects it and some part of it the anterior part of this membrane is thickened to form this ligament and the cricovocal membrane which the lower border of which attaches to the arch of the cricoid cartilage and if we come to the muscles we will see the vertical ridge which is present in the midline of the lamina it gives attachment to all the longitudinal muscles of larynx and on both sides of the ridge, the shallow concavity gives origin to the posterior cricoarytenoid muscle which is a very very important muscle of the larynx. We will be talking about this in details in another video where, where I am going to be discussing about the muscles of larynx. Now surgically this importance is that the cricoarytenoid joint together with an associated posterior cricoarytenoid muscle they are regarded as a very key functional unit of larynx because it facilitates the vocal fold mobility to ensure a patent airway when it is abducted and airway protection when it is adducted. You will see here in these pictures the articular facet for the arytenoid cartilage as this one and this one is the articular facet for the inferior corner of the thyroid cartilage and uh, also here you can see on the posterior surface these are the places which uh, gives origin to the two posterior cricoarytenoid and this is the one which gives origin to the longitudinal fibers of the esophagus. Next we move on to our paired cartilages. The first one out of them is the arytenoid cartilage. Now the arytenoids they are very irregularly shaped and they are like a three sided pyramid. Now the different parts of it and the what are the attachments that give. Now first the parts of it are the vocal process, the muscular process, the anterolateral surface, the apex, medial surface, posterior surface and the base. As you can see in this picture over here, this is the posterior surface. It has a vocal process and the muscular process as you can see over here. This is a vocal process, this is the muscular process. This here is the apex here and this is the base here. Now let's talk about what each surface and process gives attachment to. Now the vocal process as you saw it has a forward projection which gives attachment to the dorsal end of the vocal folds. The name itself tells you that it gives attachment to the vocal folds. Secondly is the muscular process. Now the muscular process is a lateral projection. The vocal process was a forward projection whereas the muscular process is a lateral projection which is giving as uh, as you can see from the name it is a muscular process so it gives attachment to some muscles. Now these muscles are the posterior cricoarytenoid and the lateral cricothyroid. 
Next we come to the anterolateral surface. Now the anterolateral surface is the surface which lies in between the two processes which is the vocal process and the muscular process. Now this anterolateral surface has two uh, fossa which is uh, divided by a crest which is running from the apex. The upper triangular fossa gives attachment to the vestibular ligament whereas the lower triangular fossa gives attachment to the vocalis and the lateral cricoarytenoid muscle. Next comes to the apex. Now, as you can see the apex over here, the apex has actually got an articular facet which gives attachment to the corniculate cartilage. Corniculate cartilage is another one of the paired cartilages. Now the medial surface is the uh, surface which is facing towards the lumen. It has absolutely no muscular attachment and it is covered with the mucous membrane. It helps in forming the lateral boundary of the posterior glottis. Next we head on to the posterior surface. The posterior surface is covered by a transverse arytenoid muscle which goes from one of the posterior surface of the arytenoid cartilage to the other cartilage. And this is one muscle which is only a singular muscle and is, it uh, attaches between the two cartilages and goes across the midline. Lastly, the last part of the arytenoid cartilage is at the base of the arytenoid cartilage. And as you can see here, the base is actually concave. It presents with a very smooth surface which articulates with the upper border of the cricoid lamina and thus forming the cricoarytenoid joint. This cricoarytenoid joint is something I will be discussing about in a little bit. So if we see as a whole uh, the arytenoid cartilage, the base is for base and apex are articulating with two different cartilages. The base is forming the cricoarytenoid joint and the apex is, uh, has an articular facet for the corniculate cartilage. Now there are two processes which we spoke about. The muscular process giving attachment to some muscles and the vocal process giving attachment to the vocal ligaments. The apex as we discussed is uh, already forming an articular facet. Now that leaves behind the three surfaces. The anterolateral surface is giving attachment to the vestibular ligament and some muscles. The medial surface absolutely has no attachment. It only has a covering of the mucous membrane. And lastly the posterior surface which is giving attachment to the transverse arytenoid muscle. Now for the last two cartilages or uh, the two last uh, paired cartilages of larynx. First one is the corniculate cartilage which is also known as the cartilage of Santorini. Now this cartilage, they are actually two very small conical nodules of elastic fibrocartilage which is situated in the posterior part of the AE fold. They articulate to a synovial joint with the apex of the arytenoid cartilage. As you can see over here, this over here are the corniculate tubercle. It is a part of the AE fold over here. As you can see over here as well, it is articulating with the apex of the arytenoid cartilage over here. And lastly is the cuneiform cartilage which we also call the cartilages of Risberg. There are two small elongated flakes. The corniculate were actually co conical in shape. It. The cuneiform cartilages are elongated flakes of fibroelastic cartilage. It is present in the free margin of the AE folds and they help in providing structural integrity to the AE folds present. So thus this in total has been all about the laryngeal cartilages, the three unpaired and the three paired cartilages. Next we head on to the ligaments and the membranes of larynx. Now la the, uh, the ligaments and membranes can either be extrinsic or they can be intrinsic. Now what does an extrinsic ligament mean? Extrinsic as uh, you can guess from the word already is that it is connecting the laryngeal cartilages to extrinsic structures which is the hyoid bone above and the trachea below. Now first important ligament extrinsic here is the thyrohyoid membrane. Now this thyrohyoid membrane as you can guess is extending from the upper border of the thyroid cartilage and uh, continuing to the body and the greater cornu of the hyoid bone. Thus it is uh, continuous in between the thyroid and the hyoid bones. This membrane is actually composed of fibroelastic tissue and it is reinforced by fibrous tissue in the midline as the median thyrohyoid ligament and posteriorly as the lateral thyrohyoid ligament. 
If you remember while I was discussing about the thyroid cartilage, I told you the superior corner of the thyroid cartilage gives attachment to this thy lateral thyrohyoid ligament which ultimately goes and attaches to the greater corner of the hyoid. Now ligaments often contain a small nodule of cartilage which, which is known as the cartilago tritatia. The thyrohyoid membrane is a very important structure. It is pierced by the superior laryngeal vessels and the internal laryngeal nerve. Let's see over here, as you can see the structure over here is the thyrohyoid membrane which is connecting from the superior border of the thyroid lamina to going to the body and the cornu of the thyroid bone. And laterally over here you can see the lateral thyrohyoid ligament and median thyrohyoid ligament which are basically condensation of this membrane. And this membrane over here you can see it is getting pierced by the internal laryngeal nerve and the superior laryngeal vessels. Second is the cricotracheal membrane which is connecting the cricoid cartilage to the first tracheal ring and the last in extrinsic uh, ligament is the hyoepiglottic ligament which attaches the epiglottis to the hyoid bone. So we see here this is the hyoepiglottic ligament as you can see the connection between hyoid and epiglottis. I told you before this hyoepiglottic ligament divides the epiglottis into a suprahyoid part and an infrahyoid part. And secondly are the cricothyroid uh, thyrohyoid membrane and lastly is the cricotracheal ligament. So next we head over to the intrinsic ligaments. Now the intrinsic ligaments of the larynx, they connect the, why are they called intrinsic? That was extrinsic because it was connecting the laryngeal cartilages to structures which are present outside the larynx. Now intrinsic ligaments, they are responsible for connecting the laryngeal cartilages amongst each other. And they also strengthen the capsule of the intercartilaginous joints. This intrinsic ligament, it actually forms a broad sheet of fibroelastic membrane that lies beneath the mucous membrane of larynx forming an internal framework. Now this uh, whole broad sheet it is divided into an upper and a lower part by the laryngeal ventricle. The upper part is called the quadrilateral membrane and the lower part is called the cricovocal membrane. Now these are very important things we have to understand here. Now when if we talk about the uh, quadrilateral membrane it extends between the lateral border of the epiglottis and the arytenoid cartilages, upper margin of which is forming the so-called structure which is the array epiglottic fold. If you remember array epiglottic fold it forms the, uh, the laryngeal uh, inlet, the lateral boundary of the laryngeal inlet. Now the quadrilateral membrane as you can see is extending in between the epiglottis and the arytenoid and ultimately it goes down to form the vestibular ligament. The low margin of this membrane is forming the vestibular ligament which is basically the underlying structure in the false vocal cord. As you see over here, this here is the quadrangular membrane. You can see it is uh, extending in between the epiglottis and the arytenoid cartilage and the lower border of it is actually here which is thickened to form the vestibular ligament which is the underlying structure of the false vocal cord. Next is the cricovocal membrane which is again a sheet of structure which is uh, attached below to the upper border of cricoid cartilage and above it is heading towards the midline of the thyroid cartilage. You can see over here this here is the cricovocal membrane. This here is a cricovocal membrane, the upper margin of which over here as you can see is thickened to form the vocal ligament. So this free upper border is constituting the vocal ligament which is forming the main framework of the true vocal cords. Now from the lower attachment of the cricovocal membrane, this membrane is actually proceeding upwards and medially and it meets with its fellow member on the opposite side to form the conus elasticus. This conus elasticus is very important because subglottic foreign bodies usually get impacted in this particular space. And anteriorly cricovocal membrane thickens out to form the cricothyroid ligament which is connecting the cricoid and the thyroid cartilages in the midline. Lastly, 
The last intrinsic ligament is the thyroepiglottic ligament which attaches thyroid to the epiglottis. So these as you can see are the three intrinsic ligaments which are the quadrangular membrane, the cricovocal membrane which both of which uh, respectively are forming the vestibular and the vocal ligament and lastly the thyroepiglottic ligament. Now that you have finished this we are going to head to the last topic for this session which are the important joints in larynx. Now when we talk about joints the first joint we will be talking about is the cricoarytenoid joint. This is a synovial joint which is surrounded by a capsular ligament. Now as you can guess from the name it is formed in between the base of arytenoid as you can see over here and a small facet which is present on the upper border of the cricoid lamina. Now this joint it exhibits two types of movements one is a rotatory movement and one is a gliding movement. Now rotatory movement happens around a vertical axis. Now it will or uh, what it will do over here is that it will go around a vertical axis as you can see over here and it will help in either abduction or adduction of the vocal cord. Adduction if this is the midline over here you will see abduction is moving away from the midline which is a rotatory motion around a vertical axis and adduction is coming back towards the midline. This is the rotatory movement which is exhibited by this joint and secondly there is a gliding movement where one arytenoid glides towards the articular car other cartilage or away from it thus helping in either opening and closing the posterior part of the glottis which is this particular movement. So we see that cricoarytenoid joint is forming in between the base of arytenoid and a facet on the cricoid lamina. It is a synovial joint and it exhibits two types of movements a rotatory movement which is basically abduction or adduction of the vocal cord and a gliding movement which is basically closing or opening the posterior part of the glottis. Lastly we come to the cricothyroid joint which is also a uh, synovial joint which is formed in between the inferior cornu of the thyroid cartilage and the facet on the cricoid cartilage. If you see over here this here is the inferior cornu of the thyroid cartilage and here is the part on the facet on the cricoid cartilage thus forming the cricothyroid joint. The cricoid cartilage rotates at this joints in a transverse axis which passes transversely through these joints. So there is only one kind of movement in this cricothyroid joint. Now this ends my topic today. I have covered about the laryngeal cartilages, the ligaments, membranes and the joints in the larynx. Now thank you for watching. I hope you found my video useful and take something away from it. If you have any questions at all you can put them down in the comment section and I will reply to you. And please please subscribe to my channel and share with your friends and like on my video if it has helped you. See you in my next video.